Hi guys, this is me Nitin and today I'm talking about web scraping. This is a specific uh, assignment kind of problem which someone shared with me. What they wanted to do is scrape product details from Amazon search page. I tried doing it through Python request library, however Amazon blocked those requests. So in this video I'm specifically going to talk about how to scrape such items uh, using Selenium. Now Selenium is a uh, browser automation tool. Basically it, it opens a browser window and then through Python code you can automate it and then run some uh, command basically to load the page interact with the page and then extract out the information so this video is going to be focused purely on that and we will be able to at the end of this video extract the product list their price values and then some details like product description ratings all those things uh, i'll try to keep it simple uh, you can use the basic understanding how selenium works and the techniques which i use to build upon it and then write a full scraper of your own so let's get started so first of all uh, we need to install selenium and again to save time i'm going to copy paste some codes uh, because i already have prepared notebook for that uh, here in this scraper notebook you can see it's already written uh, however i'll go one by one so very first thing is we need selenium installed to be able to use it now for me i'm using a specific version of the selenium so if you want to install it in your environment uh, you can use this version so it's already installed on my system so it can say already satisfied for you uh, you will need to install this now once you install the selenium package uh, you need the drivers for that. Uh, by the way, I'm on a Linux environment, so this total is purely for Linux environment. If you're on Windows, it may not work for you. So now the first step is to, to be able to use Selenium. Uh, what you need is uh, you need to uh, go to this help section and then go to about Chrome, check your version. And this is the browser version. And then what I have to do is I'll have to uh, search for Selenium driver for Chrome. Okay, you'll be on this website. You can search and match uh, with the Chrome version that you have, uh, in my case it's 114. I think it's the latest one, so you can just click on it, and then based on your operating system, you can choose anyone. For me, Linux will work for me. All right. Once you do this, uh, you would have to extract this in the current environment. So this is my directory where I'm working on. I've downloaded it here, so I'll just copy it, extract here, and this is a binary executable, so I'll put it in my current environment. Alright, so now we have our Chrome driver installed. Uh, let me get back and let's start. So, uh, the way Selenium works is you can simply do something like import Selenium and you would have to create a browser. Alright, so uh, there can be multiple ways to do it, but uh, for me, I have already written a class which provides me with a bunch of useful information. So, I'll paste it here for now. okay so this is a class in the initialization function i have these parameters headless load images chrome driver path and window size and i'm setting all those things inside here so basically first one that we have to do is we have to create an options and this is created by the web driver object which you can import and then if we pass headless true then in order to run the browser in background so that it does not pops up we would have to set these functions but i've already set it here so that we can easily create our scraper object and then these functions will be easily usable and the interesting thing is load images. So when I set to false, what it does is while opening the web pages, it won't load images. So our scraping will be faster because you don't have to wait for the page to load uh, simply because we are not loading the images. And then there are some other options. These are helpful in container environment. All right. So I'll just define these class. And I think I don't need to import Selenium. Okay. So let me initialize this class, Amazon Scraper. All right. And I think I'll, I'll set headless to false for now so that we can see the browser window which pops up. Load image is already false, so I think this should work. So once I initialize this object, you can see a new window pops up. So uh, for now, I'll just put it uh, sideways on my screen so that you can see what's happening. And because we are in a Jupyter Lab environment, so we can basically execute a piece of code and see how it, it affects this browser. Okay. So in order to interact with this, uh, we have to deal with this driver object here, which is inside our scraper object. So scraper or driver is something that we have to use. Now to get some page, uh, you can simply do get. Uh, let me try mm, google.com see if it loads yes it loads and you can see the images are not being loaded all right so uh, let me go to amazon's website because this is where i'm going to scrape certain things so let's say i want to scrape bags all right this is the uh, page and if you see the url uh, basically i think if i remove additional things this is the url that we should be able to hit to get these things all right so i'll just paste it here see how it performs all right so when i did this you can see uh, it has loaded the product search page and images are not loaded however you can see the results so the first bag that we had 
um, okay so i already signed in here so it shows the different results and this is a new window so my accounts are not logged in there it shows the different results however what we care about is these results all right so uh, this is first thing that is to load your uh, web page now what you have to do is you have to scrape these things all right so uh, there can be multiple techniques however you do it uh, but one easy way is what i do is i usually open this page on my main browser and then i utilize these developer tools to target the different elements on the web page for example um, i can either use this entire division or maybe start with this one because price is something which will always be there all right so its class name is a price hole okay so i can do is scraper or driver dot i guess it's it called get elements or we find element yes find element by class name all right so if i do this it will find something and if this was not exist uh, it will say no such element so you have to make sure that when you are dealing with this try to use correct information or wrap it inside try blocks all right so we are able to find some element on the web page now to see what it is um, I, I simply what i do is just write text so whatever text text uh, details available for that element uh, will be printed out it says 49 okay and since we are on a different window here i think this is the first product that it is returning uh, price 149 so we are able to target this a uh, particular element so now with this what we can do is um we can iterate on all the elements which which has this class now to do that uh, right now i only found single element but if i add elements it's going to return me a list of such things so for element in this all right so now you can see we are printing out the price tag value for all the product details that we have on the text and by the way just for the sake of information i'll try to load this same page again using request module and just let me search for this page and see what it returns so you can see when i try to load it using request library what it says is service not available and amazon does not allow us to do scraping using this library because it detects it and another thing is uh, why srm could be helpful is there are websites which basically load results using javascript so if you simply try to get data or using http request it might not load the actual results and you won't be able to scrape it so in that case also selenium becomes very powerful too all right so here i can see so there are some element which does not have a price tag i will simply eliminate those so if if not element dot text simply continue all right so now we have all the price tag values all right so with this i think we are able to find it now i need the product urls because i want to create a csv so i i need all this information all right and if this is my product it is i can see if i go uh, one to two uh, elements back because this is all wrapped inside, inside a single parent element all right so if i go to uh, level up in the hierarchy i should be able to find this particular element which has this href values and it contains the information about the um, about the product so i think if i target this value i should be able to find the product url all right so in order to do that um, for now uh, just for that i'll i'll write it in the new i mean i'm telling you the techniques so how how you would build these scripting uh, scripts so we have this access to this element all right Uh, and this is one element on the page now i want to go back relatively uh, two level up on this element so i can do this by using uh, find element by xpath okay so uh, what i should do is um, xpath is basically uh, let me show you how it looks so if i click on this this is a select element thing all right so if i right click here copy and then i can copy xpath so x paths are basically relative paths this is how they look like so you can move through the elements through this path it's complicated you can probably utilize chat gpt to do it uh, and for now i'll just go one step back that is to go something like this okay all right and then just see the text value all right so now it contains this item uh, let's go one step back as well so now it also includes the okay and that's a different tab i guess this one 199 that is the cost of price okay so you can see i'm i'm going back to the um, previous uh, hierarchy and because i'm putting text here so all the text which is contained inside that element will be printed out 
However, uh, I'm looking for a particular attribute that is href. So I can do dot get attribute href. Okay, luckily we found it. In case if you don't, uh, you can see if I do something like this, it, it won't be available. But I know it is somewhere in the top level hierarchy. So I can keep trying it like that and I'll definitely hit this point somewhere. Okay, so using this, I am able to find the product URL. Uh, let it load and all right uh, i think this is some advertised product on this page yes this one uh, that's why we got the link for that anyhow uh, we don't care about that for now so this is a good way to find out product url so i can now put it here and if product url is not available then simply continue so that we don't process it so with this now we have uh, product url available as well as i guess the price tag value information now i want to look for the product name so i can do do in the same tab so i have to look for the product name okay so when i click here uh, it's a span element and the class name looks very generic so i could be able to find hundred of elements like this but it won't target this exact one so i would not to use a uh, i think relative approach so for that um, let me see i think this should also be yes okay so this is a h2 element that could be helpful because out of all of this div and spam uh, span elements h2 is one which is unique okay so i'll target this h2 elements and for that i can go step back from this price tag because uh, that's how the elements are rendered on a page so you would have a bigger division inside which the name and inside which something like a price tag value all right so i have to find this h2 element now and way to do that is simply put double forward slash and h2 it's going to complain about that for sure but we would have to keep trying i'm not sure how far i would have to go but uh, this should be somewhere here okay so i have already found it by the way so i'll just copy here for now uh, although it's not working Oh, okay i have to relearn the loop all right so if if it wasn't here it won't have worked but i'm going back i see i see that i'm able to get this thing which means this is your product name so simply product name equals to this and if, if not product name then continue all right so we have product url product name uh let me get the price value now uh, remember to run this loop in case things does not works and by the way sometimes it also throws errors so it's a nice idea to keep everything in a try block all right so we have our product name which is a different one now uh, this keeps on happening with scraping you would definitely hit errors now i was looking for the price tag value all right so um, i can do this on using the find element by xpath all right so again same technology same technology that is to go backward and then find out the text so with my previous notebook i i know the path i'm going to copy it for now and see the text all right so this is your price tag value and uh, we need the first one so we have to split this text right so okay okay so we can probably apply a lot of post processing later on but i think for now it should do the work so price goes to this so you have successfully found the price now we need rating rating how we can target that element so this is your rating and i think for rating um, i have a better idea so the way it works is you can also find elements using the values that they have in the text okay so uh, this one here okay this one so you see uh, this is a unique element it's a, it has a attribute called area label and then it has some values but i know that specifically the out of five stars this five stars is something which is going to be only related to this element and always present so i can target it something like find all the elements which has an attribute area label and then contains a text five stars i think this would be a good idea to find such element and by the way this was very complicated 
so for now i'm simply going to paste it so element so this requires a lot of trial and error but you can see after going to this path uh, you can just add this power portion here and then keep on changing these relative paths to see if, if we hit that so we are looking at area label attribute and seeing if five stars is contained inside its value so its area label value is this five, i'm looking for five star text let me see if i hit that definitely not all right all right it's not working here right now i'll load this again okay i've restarted the notebook so i would have to execute all of these cells okay so it's up again by the way if the this, this tab crashes then you would have to restart the notebook to initialize it and start again okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm just simply going to paste the code i previously wrote and then talk about it because it will take a lot of time if i try it right now so this is my scraper object i'm using find element a price hole was an element i tried it using its class name i found its url i have wrapped it inside try block i found its name price rating you can see i i did get attribute once i found that element and then using area label and then i split the text using space and then took the first value similarly num reviews i have to go one more element back in the hierarchy and then was able to find something like that so i'll just execute it for now and we have this products list and we get all of this information okay so i will now import i guess i've already imported no okay so i'll not import pandas and simply convert this list of elements into a data frame you can do simply do that by using pdot data frame and then passing the product list here and pandas as pd okay so we have successfully scraped our data and we see a csv file and let me just write it to the disk so that I can share it with someone. I can do that using this p.2csv. All right, and now we have a let me see csv file here. We get the product URL, its name, its price, rating, number of reviews, and this was script from page one. That's why I've added this information as well. If you just add a follow up here and then for, do it for multiple pages, you would be able to scrape all the products for that thing. So I think I pretty much covered all the steps required to scrape product data from Amazon websites. And this is also a good enough tutorial for you to get started. Let me know if you stuck somewhere. And with that, I think the video is completed. So see you all later. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you find it valuable, just add some comments, do interact with the content. Let me know what, what you want to see next. If anything you are missing out, if you have some doubts, you can always go to chat GPT and ask in the comment section as well. If I find time I would be able to reply to it okay then bye guys